Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grace Fellowship this morning. If everyone could just stand with us this morning as we start and begin worship, and just worship in your own way today, God, as we celebrate God and, and everything that he's done. I want to start with a scripture in Psalms, Psalms 95. And it says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. And then in, in 6, verse 6, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let us remember that today as we come before him with thanksgiving. Dear God, we thank you today. We thank you, God, for this day, God, that we could come into your house, God, for this is your house, God. Lord, and we are the people of your pasture, God, and we pray, Father God, Lord, as we come to worship you today, God, Lord, we invite your presence, God. Lord, we pray that your spirit would open our eyes to see how much you love us, God sanctify us by your truth God and work in us what is pleasing to you today God Lord we pray Father God for your Holy Spirit just to encompass this place to encompass each one of us today God Lord as we lift up our lives God our hearts to you God Lord that we are truly blessed today God we are truly blessed to be in your presence God and let us not forget that and we give you all the praise God and all the glory for it's in Jesus name I am blessed, I am blessed every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed. I have shoes on my feet.
Give him some praise, church. Are you blessed today? Has the Lord blessed you? Have you got a lot to be thankful for today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do have so much, don't we? To be thankful for, so much to praise him for. Because he has been so good to us. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like and... I've got a few people that want to tell about how good God has been for them. And um, I'm going to uh, get them to come on at this time. So Allison, I'm going to ask her to come first if she wants to come and, and um, testify and just tell about the goodness of God. Amen. So I've been trying to think since he asked yesterday how to put into words what God has done for me and for my family. And there aren't words. We would be here all day. Um, as they were singing, just when I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from, or sometimes I like to say what he's kept me from, um, I've got so much to thank him for. We had an experience last weekend. I'm going to tell a specific story. It's what I felt like I should share this morning. We, um, it, God has been so many things to us. He's been a protector and a provider and a healer and of course, the Savior, and all those things that he said that he would be, but I think if I could sum that up, he's been a promise keeper to us. He promised us all these thing, those things, and he's kept those promises, and the Bible tells us that if we delight ourselves in him, that he'll give us the desires of our hearts, and that doesn't mean we're always perfect, but he's always faithful, and so 
when I was about 20 years ago, if you can believe that, um, the Lord gave me a huge desire of my heart. He allowed me to move to Kentucky to work for the Crab family, and it was a wonderful experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything, but I left there in a very bad personal situation. Not sure that I would ever get out of it um, or be free from it and know the things that, that I know today, and I thought that I could never go back there because it held, it was a place of fear for me, and I didn't want to come in contact with any of that past and last week a very special lady there passed away a friend co-worker a mama to me while I was there for the six years and so we felt like we needed to go back and I was afraid that I would open my family up to something that we didn't want to have to fight so we prayed a lot and felt like it was the right thing to do so we went um, and it was such a peaceful trip the Lord allowed me to show Jamie many of the things that I wanted to show him and, and allowed him to meet the people that I had told him about. And we went into a church afterward that I visited a few times when I was there, and I was standing in the exact spot that I sat in early on when I went there to church. And the minister got up, and for whatever reason, that Sunday, he was praying over people at the end, and he said, I want us to pray for Allison. He pointed at me in the back. He said that God will send the right man into her life. And at the time, it bothered me a little bit because I was really focused on work, and I was like, my life's not just about finding the right man, and why do you think, it? just because I'm by myself, that it, it, I didn't know really what to make of it. But as I stood in that spot Friday where I sat all those years ago with the right man that I prayed for and desired all my life, and I watched my little boy that I didn't even know how badly I desired until I had him um, running in the spot where that minister stood when he prayed that prayer, and I looked back at the things that the enemy tried to send into my life while I was there, I realized that that wasn't just a prayer. Surely the Lord instructed him to pray that prayer, and it was a prayer with promise. And I'm living in that promise now. And then we went to our school in Tennessee, and I'll be very brief because we've shared this story. Many of you know that we, the Lord filled another desire of our hearts and allowed us to go to Tennessee. We wanted to lead Christian education. So he opened that door, and we went, and it was a very challenging year you know that and we came home very broken and defeated um, our house drained us financially to repair the damages we took a sixty thousand dollar pay cut that I still don't know how we did um, what we felt like we had pretty much lost our health was bad I needed to be at home to take care of my health and I felt like I had given up that opportunity we had left youth ministry here we felt completely defeated, empty, broken, and we came back, and in that time, the Lord has allowed Jamie to step back into leadership. He's made a way for me to be home. He has allowed us to come back into youth ministry here. He's restored. He's given us a home that was, is far greater than the one that was damaged. He has, when he says in his word that he will restore everything that was lost, he will it's a promise and you can count on it. The one thing that was still hard for us were the emotional wounds. We left with a lot of damaged relationships and, and just um, bitterness. And a lot, You guys know this story. And so we didn't know if we ever wanted to go back and confront that. If somebody from there reached out to us, it took us days to recover. But on Friday, we visited the school. And we were able to see that they are doing well. Um, they're thriving now, it seems, and so that was good. We had such a warm reception there. Relationships that were damaged or painful when we left were peaceful. And our house that we lived in when we were there was for lease, and so and you could do a self-tour, so we were able to go back into our house. So all of our memories that were hard and, and tough and things that Elisha didn't remember or that he remembered painfully, we were able to replace those with memories of peace this time, this trip. And so God truly has restored everything that we lost. He taught us in that situation that he will fight our battles. He taught us in a new way to be still and know that he is God and that he will take care of things. And he um, has been so faithful. And I, I can't, as I said, even put into words all the things that he has done for us. But even if he never did those things, just the fact that he's God and that he saved us would be enough to be thankful. Um, but I don't know about you, but we are definitely blessed this morning, and we are thankful for all that he's done. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I have, uh, you know, God is a restorer, amen? He's a God of restoration, and he can take you from pain to peace. Amen? That's so good. 
All right, I've asked my mother to testify. She's going to come on at this time, so come on, Mama. She's, uh, I told her she could preach if she wanted to, so we'll see what she does. I'm not a public speaker like you all. I'm just shy, and I, can, I taught Sunday school for 15 years, and I can relate to kids, but I don't like speaking in front of a crowd. But as I was coming in this morning, I thought, Lord, I'm so thankful that I'm able to walk in to church without being assisted. There's so many people my age that's not able to even come to church like Nathan. He'd love to be in church, but his health just does not permit it. And um, I'm thankful for sticky notes. <laughs> without sticky notes, I don't know what I'd be doing from day to day. But anyway, uh, uh, I just want to tell everybody that the Lord has truly blessed my life. And when the Lord blesses us, I think we're required to tell people about our blessings because that's the way we overcome. And like most everybody here, I'm most thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful that he loved me enough to give his life on the cross that I might be saved from my sin, able to go to heaven to be with my loved ones someday and to be with Jesus. But as we go about our daily lives, we need to look around and realize how much we are blessed. I'm so thankful every morning the good Lord blessed me to see another day. And when Sandy and I pray every morning, he always says, thank you, Lord, for giving us a beautiful world that you created for us to live in and enjoy. And I'm thankful I was raised by that great man of God who taught me to be thankful and to trust him. I'm thankful for uh, a wonderful husband, for my kids, grandkids, and my extended family that all love the Lord. I'm thankful for a wonderful church family and a great place where we can worship. And I'm thankful for you all. I know what kind of man he is and how he lives his daily life. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, I'm thankful for the many healings I've received over the years. Thankful Jesus knows our hearts and hears and answers our prayers. I'm th thankful for the other things we sometimes take for granted. Even though I can't carry a tune, it's like you all. That's where he gets his, his singing from. I find myself singing a song. A friend of mine sung in Homemaker all the time. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me, a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. And it goes on to say, to me, you're all that matters, though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I'm thankful for the Lord that he is our protection, our hope, and our strength in these terrible days we're living in. And I'm forever, ever thankful for Jesus. Thank you. All right. Good job. She may make a preacher after all. She used to preach at me all the time. I know that. Tammy, would you come on at this time? Amen. God is good, amen, and it's good to hear the testimony of those who can attest to it. There you go. Thank you. So um, when Pastor Yule asked me just a little while ago <laughs> if I would like to testify, uh, he said, uh, you can say no if you want to because I know it's kind of last minute. But how could I ever say no? God has been so good to me. First, I want to thank him for saving my soul. I want to thank him for all that he's brought Robbie and I through. This year has been so very hard. I've lost my parents, my last aunt, my last uncle. Robbie being in the hospital, in and out, four different times. <laughs> and any time.
time, but I can have a moment to talk of his goodness. I'm going to take it because he has been so good to me. I thank him for our church family, our pastor and his family. You guys have just been amazing. And I just want to say thank you. And thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. All right. God is good. Amen. All right. Thank you all for their testimony. We know that many of you have, can stand and testify of the goodness of God. And many of you can relate to, yes, life is hard, but God is good. And yes, life is difficult, but God is good. And yes, this hurts, but God is still good. And yes, I go through pain, maybe not just physically, but mentally or emotionally. But you know what? God is still good through it all. Amen. If you believe that, why don't you go ahead and stand with us. They're going to lead us into some more worship. And why don't you just praise the Lord and magnify him. Why don't you go ahead and just give the Lord some praise right now. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got a video I forgot all about. Go ahead, uh, Olivia, hit the video. And you can, you can remain standing.
And God, you're so good. And God, you're so good. And God, you're so good. You're so and honor and glory lift him up today yes hallelujah God is so good amen God is good and he is worthy of all praise one more time give him some praise give him your best praise today thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Oh, thank the Lord for his goodness. Amen. Amen. You can be seated and the kids can go ahead and go to class. We do have nursery for three and under and then four to 11 is in uh, one class. And then, is that the right? The eight, four to eight, four to eight, sorry. And then nine to 12, I think, and then 13 and up. I think that's how it goes. So, so you how much I know. And if you want to um, turn in your Bibles to Psalms 136. Turn in your Bibles to Psalm 136. Just want to read the first verse here. Psalm 136, verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks. 
to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let me read that again. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. I want to preach to you today on this topic, truly thankful. Being truly, truly thankful. Pray with me if you would. Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Lord, for this day you've given us, this opportunity that we've got to be in your house and to turn our attention to you for just a few moments, Lord, and to be thankful for who you are and for what you've done. But Lord, let us not leave here, Lord, and forget about you and forget about what you've done in our lives. Lord, let us live every day with a, an attitude of gratitude. Lord, let us be a thanks living, not just a thanksgiving and that we just live a life of thankfulness, Lord. That every day we, we see what you've done in our lives and we are truly, truly thankful. Lord, bless your word as it goes forth today, Lord. I pray that you just speak into our hearts, Lord. I pray that you would talk into our spirits today, Lord. I ask that you would, would uh, speak to my heart, Lord, and help me to preach your word, Lord. And that you would just let your for word go forth, Lord, and that you would anoint me, not just me, but others as well. And Lord, bless us today. Let us receive from you, and we give you all praise and honor, and it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I want you to turn around and greet somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Well, this time of year, our minds, or at least my mind and my stomach, start to you know, turn toward turkey right, and Thanksgiving, and the day that's coming, and the meals that we are going to be so blessed to, to be able to participate in, and hopefully you have Thanksgiving plans, and Thanksgiving is, in case you didn't know, it's just coming Thursday, right, and so uh, it is, uh, today would be our last official time together before we uh, have Thanksgiving, and so I want to talk a little bit today about being thankful, truly thankful. To God and for what he has done for us and it's I think it's wonderful that our nation still celebrates uh, a, a national holiday like Thanksgiving a day that is set aside to honor and to thank God that's what Thanksgiving is about it is a time for us to honor and thank God for all the blessings that he has given us and America is indeed blessed we may have problems we may have issues uh, we may have uh, things going on that we don't agree with. We may have, you know, injustices and social issues and political issues, but that doesn't change the fact that we are still a blessed nation, and we have a lot of, of things to be thankful for. We have a lot of folks who need to give thanks, and we have a lot of folks who do give thanks. But we also have some folks, I believe, that give thanks, but are they really truly thankful when they give thanks, or is it just some kind of lip service? You know, they have a gratitude for this, and do they have true gratitude for that? And they say they're thankful for this, and they say they're thankful for that, but do they really have a heart that is thankful? And where is their gratitude directed? Because sometimes we wonder, you know, people say, well, I'm thankful. Who are you thankful to? To who do you give your thanksgiving to. They say they're blessed, but do they acknowledge the one who does the blessing? You know, our scripture that we read here in Psalms 136 says, Oh, give thanks. Who do we give thanks to? Give thanks unto the Lord. That's who we give thanks to. Why would we do that? Because he is good. Why else would we do it? For his mercy endures forever and we serve a God who has endless mercy aren't you glad that his mercy endures forever amen give him some praise where would we be without the mercy of God in our lives on a daily basis and I'm not going to take the time to read all of Psalms 136 but at the end of verse 1 it says that he is good for his mercy endures forever. Then verse 2 says something like this. Give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Verse 3. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. Why? Because his mercy endures forever. Verse 4 says to him who alone does great wonders. 
for his mercy endures forever. And at the end of every verse, it says, for his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. For him who does these great and mighty things, for his mercy endures forever. Over and over and over and over and over for 26 verses, the psalmist says that his mercy endures forever. We know that we're to give thanks unto the Lord, right? The Bible teaches us that. We've been raised, we've been taught, we've been uh, impressed upon us to give thanks to God. But just because you know who to give thanks to doesn't really make you thankful. See, to give, you can give thanks and not truly be thankful. You can, you know, have gratitude and give gratitude and not truly be grateful you can sing praises and not truly be praising God you can kind of just go through the motions you know you can raise your hand and 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 sing the songs and and cry out but you don't necessarily have to be worshiping right there's a difference between just saying it and then truly meaning it saying it and then truly believing it and living it in your life you know we can Raise our hands and say, you know, saying, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. But then in our minds, we're thinking, what's for lunch? I just want some pizza. Maybe a fresh salad, too. Right? You ever done that? You're singing one thing, but your mind's on something else. You're going through the motions, but are you truly thankful for what God has done in your life? See, we need to get our minds focused upon who God is and what he's done in our lives. Our hearts need to really be truly thankful to him. Our spirit needs to touch his spirit. And then when we sing unto him and we lift up our voices to him, we are truly thankful thankful for what he's done in our lives. You know, we sing that song, When I Think About the Lord. How he saved me. Think about what you're singing. How he, how he saved me. How he raised me. How he filled me with the Holy Ghost. How he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord. How he picked me up and turned me around and set my feet on solid ground. What should your response be? Well, it makes me want to shout. It makes me want to sing hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Why? Because I think about what you've done in my life. I remember where I was and what you did to pick me up and to save me and to sanctify me and to fill me and to bless me. When we think about that, we should really, truly be thankful for where we were and what God has done for us. Yes, times are tough, and yes, sometimes we go through pain and agony, and sometimes things aren't always we, the way we want it to be, but God is still good, and we can truly be thankful to Him. Amen? Amen. Give Him some praise. You know, there's times that we can be thankful more for the gift than we are the giver. You know, if I said, all right, I'm going to give everybody here a brand new 70-inch plasma TV or whatever they, the newest, you know, smart TV that's out now. I'll give every one of you one as you leave. Or I'm going to give everybody a new car. You'd probably go home and love the gift more than you would the giver, right? You might sit for a while and drive your car or sit and watch your big screen TV and say, boy, I like that Pastor Yule. He gave me a TV. But then after a while, you forget about me. You just say, I love this TV. Man, this is a good TV. I love it. I love this car. You end up loving the gift more than you do the giver. Sometimes that happens to us. We love the blessings more than we do the blesser, the one who provides the blessing. And you can say, thank you, Lord, all day long and not truly be thankful. You ever notice when you go to restaurants that they bring you the, you know, you go in, you have a nice meal. Uh, one of our favorite places to eat is Olive Garden, right? Amelia loves Olive Garden. I like Olive Garden, too. So 
anytime we decide where we want to go, we, after church we decide where we want to go eat or it's a special day we're going to go eat. Amelia's always, we're throwing out names, she's always Olive Garden. Doesn't matter what, Olive Garden. It's always the same. So if I want to go to Olive Garden, I just say, where do we want to go, Mills? Tell us where you want to go. And it's just Olive Garden. I'm like, yes, I support that idea. But you go in, you sit down in the restaurant, they bring you your check, and at the bottom of the check, sometimes you maybe you've noticed it, it's on a lot of restaurants, it says gratuity not included. What does that mean? That means that the bill that you've got only includes for the food and your drink and, and you know, that that you bought, that, that you've, you're going to pay for. It doesn't include you being thankful for the service that they provided. So your gratuity, your tip that you want to give to the person because of the service they've given to you, it's not included in the bill. You have to pay that extra, right? And lots of people, I know lots of people that do this, based upon how good the service was, is how good you decide to give the tip, right? And uh, sometimes I wonder, you know, we take up offering at the end of the service. I don't know that that's such a good idea because depending on how good the service is may determine on how much you want to give when you leave, you know? Reminds me of a story I heard of a, of a dad and a mom and a little boy that had left church and they were just complaining about everything. You know, they get in their car and they're, you know, just, it was too hot in there. Too hot? I thought it was too cold. Well, I don't know, but they sung this song and they were off key. Well, I don't know about that, but it was, you know, I didn't like that sermon the preacher preached. And they're just complaining about everything, you know. And the little boy says, I don't know what y'all complaining about. It's a pretty good show for a dollar. <laughs> you know? Give a dollar, I mean, shoot, can we pass that up? But your gratuity is not included in your bill, right? You have to pay for your service. And the better they do, obviously, I guess, the better you would want to pay for them, right? But sometimes that the, the way it is, that it, that's the way that we look sometimes when it comes to God. We wait for him to do something good to us. Then we want to reward him. We want to tip him. We want to give him a gratuity based upon what he's done for us. But God deserves praise no matter what he's done for us because he is the God that sits on the throne. He is the God that's in heaven. He's the one. As you read through one Psalms 136, and I encourage you to do that this week, it talks about he made the great lights. He made the heavens. He's the one that stretched out the earth above the water. He made the moon and the stars. And he, you know, he, he did all these wonderful things. He is a God that deserves all all praise and honor and glory. He deserves gratuity. He deserves gratitude whether we give it to him or not. And I think sometimes we wake up in the morning and we see the sunrise. And I think to myself, gratitude's not included. He gives you the sunrise every morning whether you're thankful or not. He blesses you whether you're thankful or not. You know, you go to a restaurant. I've known people who said that they've had bad service and they refused to leave a tip at the restaurant. Well, the service was bad. I understand that, but they still brought you food, right? They still brought you drink. They may have spilled it in your lap, but they still brought it to you, you know? They may have disappeared for 20 minutes and you couldn't get a refill, but they still brought you, they still did something, so don't just not give them anything. You know, my feeling is at least give them something, right? And sometimes we think that with God. He does all these wonderful things for us, but gratitude isn't included. We have to give that as extra, right? And so the sun comes up every morning, but gratitude is not included. And the Lord is good, and he's faithful, and he's trustworthy, and he's righteous, but yet gratitude isn't included. His mercy endures forever. His love is unfailing, and his grace is sufficient, but gratitude isn't included. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but gratitude is not included. We have to include that extra just because he deserves it amen he deserves some gratitude and so we need to praise him and thank him and really truly be thankful and I believe too much of our time spent with God is requesting and not rejoicing too much of our time in God's presence is putting in a requisition instead of putting up praise the Bible says in Psalm 103, 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forgive Get not all his benefits who listen to some of the things that he's done and I ask you does this apply to you does this apply to your life it says forget not all of his benefits who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction who covered you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfied your mouth with good things that your youth is renewed like the eagles give Give praise to God. Bless the Lord because of what he's done. And sometimes I think we need to just really truly be thankful and come to God not asking him for anything, but just give him some praise and give him some gratitude. But I believe for us to truly be thankful to God, we must have a couple of things. There's lots of things, but I want to mention a few things to you. First of all, we must have reflection. I don't think you can really truly be thankful to God until you look back and see what God has done for you. You look back and you see this is what God has done. First Chronicles chapter 16 is a wonderful chapter. It talks about David and his men bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel and then them having some kind of ceremony to celebrate the Ark being back into their presence. First Chronicles chapter 16 talks about this, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter. It's, you know, it's like 43 verses. But I want to read a couple of these and let us understand why they were so thankful and what they did to really give an attitude of gratitude, to really have, be truly thankful to the Lord for what he's done. And so David is bringing the ark back in and that says in verse 7 that on the day that David delivered, he delivered this first psalm. David started and he said this, to thank the Lord and then into the hand of Asaph and his brethren, David said, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing it to him, sing songs unto him, talk of all his wondrous works. He says, make known his deeds among the people. Reflect, David is saying, on what God has done and tell people what God has done in the past. I think for us to be truly faithful, we got to look back. We got to look back at what God has done in our lives. He goes on in verse 12 and he says, Remember the marvelous works that the Lord has done. In verse 15, he says, Be ye mindful always of his, com of his covenant. See, I think we should have our mindset of always looking back at what God has done in our lives because when you look back over your life and you reflect on what God has done it's only then that you can truly be thankful it was God who healed you it was God who helped you when no one else could help you it was God that helped get you through that trouble it was God who protected you it was God who delivered you it was God who brought you through that storm it was God who made a way when there didn't seem to be a way it was God who broke down those strongholds in your life it was God who crumbled walls it was God who split waters it was God who moved mountains it was God who delivered it was God who did these things over and over and over in your life. It's always been God. And when you, amen, give him praise. And when you look back, you see evidence that God has always been there. I ran into a coworker that I, I used to work with. I don't work with her anymore, but I used to work with her for a, a number of years. And I saw her not too long ago, and her husband had passed away. And uh, I was talking, I had heard that, and so I was, i just seen her, and I just, you know, hadn't seen her since her husband had passed away. And I got to talking to her and just asking her how she was doing, and it had been a little while since she had passed away, and she was, said she was doing good, and we talked a little bit. And she told me, she said, it was a really tough time because he was really, really sick. And I had to spend a lot of time away from work, and a, and a lot of, uh, of my uh, free time, I just spent taking care of him. And she talked about how difficult it was and how much he had suffered and, and just it was a really sad situation. But she, and she was telling me some of the details that I really didn't know about. And she said, but you know what? 
I look back now, and this is the phrase she used. She said, but I see the fingerprints of God over all kinds of things. She began to tell me this happened and that happened, and, and I can see God in this, and I can see God moving in that. And she said, looking back on it now, it had to be God. Looking back on it now, she kept saying, it, it was hard while I was there, but looking back on it now, she just kept saying that. I saw the evidence of God. And see, sometimes you have to look back. For you to truly be thankful, you have to have reflection. You have to be able to look back. And David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant in here, and he tells them, you must give thanks to the Lord because of what he has done, what he's done in the past. You need to be thankful for God. You need to look back. But not only that, you to truly be thankful, you must not just have reflection. You must have a revelation. you got to look up and know who it is that's blessed you and know who it is that has touched you and know who it is who has come into your life and has been there for you. He tells them here as he goes on and he says, Sing unto the Lord, all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the nation, his marvelous works among all people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also it is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens glory and honor are in his presence, strength and gladness are in his place. He's telling them exactly who God is. He's given them a revelation of who he is. And I don't think you can ever truly be thankful until one, you have looked back and seen what God has done, and two, you have looked up and you realize who it is that you serve. You serve the God of the universe. And I wonder sometimes about the way people praise God. And you can praise God any way you want. I'm not trying to, to judge. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, uh, cast stones or, or, or make you feel bad or whatever. But, but you know, I, I see different people, and I love the way people raise their hands in worship. You know, I like it when people surrender, you know, in worship. They just raise their hands, you know, like, come out with your hands up. We got you surrounded. Come on out. You know, that's worship. I do a lot of pointing sometimes when I worship. If you, I don't know if y'all noticed that. You will now that I mentioned it. I just do a one finger, I point to the Lord. Lord, it's all about you. Lord, it's all about you. I notice Amelia sometimes when she worships, she does a stop. That's how she worships. She's like, I, I'm praising God right here, right now. Either that or she's trying to cast something on to somebody in the audience, you know. She's bless you and bless you and bless you. But people worship in different ways, right? But I don't understand people who just sit on their hands and they don't ever raise their voice and they don't ever raise their hands do you not know who it is that you're worshiping do you not know who it is that you're praising it's God the God of the universe and I you know David says it here and it says it in other Psalms as well that God is great and greatly to be praised for great is the Lord he says and greatly to be praised and I believe if you serve a little God then you'll give him a little praise but if you understand the God of the universe the God who created all things the God who sent his son to die on the cross that you might be saved if you understand who he is and you get a revelation of what he's done in your life then he is a big God and he deserves a big praise amen the God that you serve is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. To truly be thankful, we must not only look back and we must only not look up, but we must also have a realization, not just a reflection, not just a revelation, but also a realization to look around and see what God has done in your life. He goes on here with this ark and with this ceremony that he's done. They, they bring the ark in. They have this great ceremony. And David tells them to be thankful for what God has done in the past. Know who it is that you're serving. God is great and he deserves praise. You need to look up and have a revelation of who he is. But then he goes on and he says this as he's finishing up. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Amen. That's a, that's a sermon right there. And he says Save us, for God is our salvation and, and gathered us together and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks unto his holy name and glory in thy praise. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said amen and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a service. Then the very next verse said, So he left there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the ark continually as every day's work required. Yes, they did have a day set aside that they celebrated and they thanked God and they had this Thanksgiving day, if you would. But they didn't just have a one-day praise. They left the ark there, which represented the presence of God in the presence of the people, so that every day they could look around and see what God had done and every day be thankful to Him. See, this thanksgiving, this worship of God is not only the work of a solemn day. It, yes, we should come to church on Sunday and we should worship God. But we should do it on Monday too. We should do it on Tuesday and we should do it on Wednesday and Thursday and the rest of the week. We should be praising Him. It should be a work of every day. And David, David settles, he puts the ark in the, in, the, in the presence of the people for a continual, everyday thing. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've had people over the years ask me, well, I just wish I knew what the will of God was in my life. Well, according to that scripture, it's for you to give thanks in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You remember in Luke chapter 17, Jesus is on his way through Samaria, and, and as he goes through the, a village, he sees ten lepers. And they cry out to him and say, have mercy upon us. And so Jesus tells them, go show yourself to the, to the priest, go, show your, go to the temple and show yourself to the priest and you'll be cleansed. And they all ten left. And the Bible says that one of them, as he was going, he looked around and he noticed that his skin was no longer leprous. That he was healed of this awful, contagious, deadly disease. And the Bible says he turned and he come back to give praise to the Lord. Jesus said, I thought there were ten. Where's the other nine? You're the only one that comes back to give me praise. The Bible says that in verse 15 of that, of that chapter, the Amplified Bible says it like this. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back glorifying and praising and honoring God with a loud voice. I think I probably would too. The Message Bible says it like this. One of them, when he realized that he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet so grateful he couldn't thank him enough. See, sometimes it just takes a little looking around to see all the good things that God has done for you. To truly be thankful, we must have a reflection, we must have a revelation we must have a realization. We must look back, we must look up, and we must look around. It's easy for us to look around and see the tangible things, right? We're thankful for our house. We're thankful for our car. We're thankful for our family. We're thankful for our church. We're thankful for this and that. We can touch and feel and, you know, the tangible things. But I think the things that we need to really be thankful for are the intangible things. Things like love, grace, mercy, peace, joy, hope. Isn't that the things that you really should be thankful for? Not the things, we're all thankful for the things we can see and touch and feel and eat and taste and smell and drive and, you know, that kind of thing. But are you really thankful for the intangible stuff, the things that you can't touch and feel and taste and smell, the grace and mercy and love and peace and joy and long-suffering. They sung a song a little earlier, I've got so much to thank him for. 
So much to praise him for. You see, he's been so good to me. And when I think of what he's done, where he's brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for. I love that first verse. It says, when I look around and see the good things he's done for me, I know, you may not know it, but I know it, that I'm unworthy of them all. Yet his blessings he freely gives, and I owe my life to him. And I've got so much to be thankful for. Are you truly, truly, truly thankful today? If you are, give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise.